So I love FPV drones. I love flying them. I love building them. But I don't love how they look. To me, they still just look like a bunch of electronics bolted onto a bunch of carbon fiber. And, you know, it's boring. When I fly these things, I feel like Han Solo. But when I look at them, eh, not so great. So I figured I'm going to build my own drone and I'm going to make it look awesome. But I wasn't really willing to sacrifice too much to accomplish this. Now, I'm well aware there's a pretty obvious reason that almost all drones look the same. It's because the performance to cost or performance to manufacturing ease is really really good when you just cut flat plates of carbon fiber bolt them together you can use generic components you can make your frame easy to use with multiple different components you can make it cheap to manufacture it's strong it's great blah 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 doesn't look great so this is my solution to that problem you may or may not have that problem maybe you love the way drones look now of course i'm being a little facetious here right it's actually no trivial matter to design a really good drone using carbon fiber plates. And in fact, this drone, I'm not expecting it to be the best drone ever. Uh, it's going to be, hopefully, good at what I want it to do. Because in the end, every aeronautical design is a compromise between various things. And I'm choosing in this particular drone to make some compromises in the favor of uniqueness and um, aesthetics. And those will come at the cost of some other things. I've decided that I am willing to give up some ease of manufacture, which of course means I'm giving up probably a little bit of cost. And I'm also willing to give up the flexibility to use different components. I've decided to choose a specific base set of components that I think are really good. By using a known set of electronics, I know exactly the space that those electronics will take. And I can design my CAD very carefully around those. I decided at the beginning that I was going to use vertical arms. Now, obviously one of the big reasons for this is because it is unique, or not unique, but it's uncommon to use vertical arms. And further to the vertical arms, I was going to try and keep more than just perpendicular angles because I'd already decided that I was going to use 3D printed or in the end CNC machined aluminium parts to mount the motors and attach the arms, etc. It gave me a lot of options to explore different shapes. By using these vertical arms and giving them a droop, I was able to drop the center of gravity of the motors and try and get the center of gravity of the whole quad with a bot bottom mounted battery to be pretty much in line with the props, which is exactly where you want them to be. I also was able to tilt the motors outwards 10 degrees. Uh, this should in theory improve stability a bit at the cost of a little bit of thrust, but also it just kind of looks cool, right? And different again. I've got to thank uh, Zach Carrizales here. He gave me some frame design knowledge bombs. He's quite an expert, even though you may not have seen his name around. He's behind many of the really awesome frame designs from Newbie Drone. Uh, he coined the term central dihedral for these motors tilted outwards, so maybe I'll call it that. Um, but yeah, thanks to him. It's always awesome just to learn from people in the hobby who are willing to share and hopefully maybe you following along with us you'll learn a little bit as well and hey you don't have to learn because i'm clever you might say look at this moron and the way that he's doing things now i know why all quads look the same who knows i do have to give a big old shout out to newbie drone as always uh i'm a team pilot there or a team maker or whatever you want to call me but um They've always supported me in doing these crazy projects and doing things differently. And I think that reflects in their products. You see that they always design things just a little bit slower, a little bit more carefully and a little bit different to the way that everybody else is deciding that needs to be done. And I think that's a pretty awesome characteristic of the company. So after cutting and testing a prototype with 3D printed parts and locally cut carbon fiber, I was ready to go and get the CNC milled aluminium and parts which Newbie Drone was able to do for me and they sent them over. This version here that I'm showing you is one of the early versions which is full of 3D printed um, parts and you can see where it got the banana split name which is kind of stuck despite the fact that the latest versions look much less banana like and more xenomorphy but 
Perhaps the name will change. I'm not sure. You can let me know what you think. I can't even tell you how stoked I was to receive the first milled aluminium and carbon fiber parts from UV Drone. It's, it's always exciting getting a shipment of new drone bits, but it's even more awesome when you design them. So the build, the build went together super smoothly. I put in the Newbie Drone AIO V2 uh, Flow 2004 1750KV motors for the first build. I've tried bigger mo- motors since then. And the Polar Vista. I love that low light capability. And the Crossfire Nano, which I mentioned earlier. I'm also using a mini mortal T antenna on the crossfire. Honestly, it's you know going to be a loss of performance, but it's plenty for the sort of proximity freestyle stuff that I like, and it keeps it out of the props. I do think I need to design possibly a better solution to that later on, but you could always put a full, uh, a fully mortal T on one of the arms, or you know use Ghost or something else with a smaller antenna, and then that would go in this position on the on the camera pod, which has been designed to attach an antenna to. Speaking of the props, for the lightweight 5-inch build, this 2004 version, there really aren't a ton of options, but I used the Gemfan 5125 and uh, 5130, and they've been the best so far. They are somewhat delicate, um, but not too bad. Obviously, the next step was tuning and flying the thing. Uh, Tuning was reasonably simple, I just turned down some filtering since the frame has very little residence and then turned up the gains a bit to about 1.3 beta flight beta flight 4.3 made this real easy i'm flowing it on a 6s gnb 750 milliamp battery and the quad's not exactly featherweight it's like 420 grams all up weight with the battery but uh yeah that's pretty good for what i like to do the sort of Freestyle, flowy, momentum-based flying in parks. That's what I like doing. Well, I initially printed the canopy in ABS. But even a decent ABS print tends to be weakest along the layer lines, and it did eventually start cracking. I was nervous about using PLA because it has really poor thermal resistance. You know, if you get it too warm, it gets soft and deforms. So I figured having a Vista mounted to that could be problematic. Um, but the airflow is actually really good. The design that I made with these gills on the front definitely does allow the air to move flu- through the canopy really nicely and out the back. And the Vista does not get too hot in flight. But of course, sitting on the deck, it can get really hot really quickly. So that would be a problem for PLA long term. This is where, for me, PCBWay stepped in. You may know them as cheap and speedy PCB production house. That's what I've used them for a bunch of times in the past. Uh, But they also offer CNC machining and 3D printing and all that jazz. So when they offered to sponsor something for a project, I went ahead and I designed this uh, pod to be printed in SLS nylon and also glass-filled SLS nylon, which is the same SLS nylon we're used to, but with 30% glass fiber filaments in it, which makes it much stiffer and possibly not as impact resistant, but definitely very strong. I also had a a Cadex peanut mount printed in TPU, and that was really cool. I'm very familiar, obviously, with the FDM-based TPU prints, which we all have on our drones all the time, but this SLS printed TPU is crazy soft and made an awesome camera mount. Unfortunately, it is pretty expensive. I think this print would have been in the order of $35. The one thing I did learn through this trial, and that's the whole reason that I chose two different materials, is that the plain nylon print has a negative tolerance, which means that holes come out bigger and thin parts come out thinner, whereas the glass filled nylon has a positive tolerance, which results in thicker, stronger prints, but obviously smaller holes from the same design file. So it was probably about 0.2 mils positive tolerance on the glass filled nylon and maybe 0.2 negative on the uh, regular nylon. The pure nylon print actually cracked really easily and broke, uh, but I was able to fix it very quickly with super glue and um, Q-Bond powder. And because the nylon is slightly porous, the fix was really strong and now has lasted well. The glass-filled version has been awesome from the get-go, and I'll definitely be using it in the future. 
Uh, it's a very, very cool material. The carbon fiber tips of my arms have taken a beating and started to delaminate a little bit, but you know, that was to be expected. I was being a bit optimistic with this design and I'll have to resolve that. Probably some TPU printed tips or just a change to the design. Maybe I could even extend the aluminum bits, but I'm a bit worried that that'll be too heavy. Since I built the 2004 version, I've also built a 2306.5 version with those newbie drone smooth motors and uh, paired that with 6S 1300 milliamp hour batteries. And that's a pretty sweet build for your sort of more traditional freestyle build. Weighs in at about 395 grams dry weight. So I guess you could call it a middleweight quad. It's definitely also well suited to the kind of freestyle that I like to do. So where to from here? A few people have expressed interest in having a version of this thing produced, and I would love to do that. And Newbie Drone has said that they would love to do that. So if you are interested, it would probably be a very limited run, because I'm well aware this is not going to be a mass appeal thing for your everyday bando basher. Uh, but if you're interested in something different to add to the fleet, then I think it's really awesome. Uh, then just follow along here, YouTube, Facebook, etc. I'm setting up a Facebook group for this particular frame that you can follow the development along with or keep an eye on the newbielabs.com blog or the newbie hive group etc you'll be able to find it so there's definitely some development to go and i'd actually love all your guys input so please do engage with me on any of the platforms if you like but otherwise just thanks for following along i hope you enjoyed it cheers for now